Hello, and welcome again to First United Methodist Church, Mason City, Iowa. As we approach the Christmas holiday and the birth of Jesus, we are focusing on Christmas carols. This week we are looking at Joy to the World, but it has an interesting history. Joy to the World is perhaps an unlikely popular Christmas hymn. First of all, it is based on a psalm, and second, it celebrates Christ's second coming much more than the first. This favorite Christmas hymn is the result of a collaboration of at least three people and draws its initial inspiration not from the Christmas narrative in Luke 2, but from Psalm 98. The first collaborator was the English poet and dissenting clergyman Isaac Watts. He paraphrased the entire Psalm 98 in two parts, and it first appeared in his famous collection, The Psalms of David, imitated in the language of the New Testament, 1719. Joy to the World was taken from the second part of the paraphrase, Psalm 98, verses 4 through 9, entitled The Messiah's Coming and Kingdom. Watts, commenting on his paraphrase of the psalm, notes, in these two hymns I have formed out of the 98th Psalm, I have fully expressed what I esteem to be the first and chief sense of the Holy Scriptures. For Watts, the Psalms were not to be viewed as biblical material in their own right, but had value only in as much as they pointed toward the New Testament. A comparison between Watts' Psalm paraphrase and the original verses in the King James translations of Psalm 98, 4 through 9, demonstrates considerable freedom. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of a song. With trumpets and sound of cornet, make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. Let the sea roar in the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. Curiously, stanza three is the exception. It is not based on Psalms 98 and is sometimes omitted. However, we have it in our Methodist hymnal. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found. The curse is a reference to Genesis 3.17, when God says to Adam following the eating of the apple from the tree, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. As a part of five-point Calvinism, the total depravity of man, the curse is a significant part of classic Reformed theology, Isaac Watts' theological perspective. The second collaborator was an unwitting one, George Frederick Handel, the popular German-born composer residing in London. Though contemporaries in England, they did not collaborate on this hymn, another pieced together portions of Handel's Messiah to make up the tune that we sing in North America. The opening bars for the chorus, Lift Up Your Heads, was adapted to the Joy to the World. An instrumental portion of the opening tenor recitative, Comfort Ye, provides a basis for the text, Heaven and Nature Sing. Such borrowings were common, the aesthetic notion being that the music of great musicians had in itself an innate beauty. The third collaborator who assured that this tune and text would appear together in the United States was the Boston music educator, Lowell Mason. It was Mason, a musician with significant influence in his day, who published his own arrangement of Handel's melodic fragments in Occasional Psalms and Hymn Tunes in 1836 and named the tune Antioch. While this is not the only tune to which Watts' text is sung, it is certainly the dominant one. Actually, this tune remains virtually unknown in Great Britain, 
but is the one we sing and hear all the time in the United States. The result is a favorite Christmas hymn based on an Old Testament psalm set to musical fragments composed in England and pieced together across the Atlantic in the United States. So quite a history for joy to the world. The next couple of weeks we'll be taking off, so we will resume our hymn time again in January. And I'd like to take, then play for you a piano arrangement of Joy to the World and then play it on the organ. 